brought to you by GTA. We start with you. What's Care Pacific Island's mission is uplifting the human spirit and its newest program, Malik Naha'ani, Bright Futures, aims to do just that by providing school-based mental health counseling services for Guam youth ages 11 to 17, affected by 2018's Typhoon Mankut and now COVID-19. This particular program under the nonprofit organization is funded by the Department of Health and Human Services Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Beverly Chargaloff Coleman is a clinical program director. The whole goal of the program is to provide mental health school-based services to youth um, who could benefit from these kinds of supports. Um, and all we're doing really is just capitalizing on the already established partnership with the Guam Department of Education because we do have other programs through Westcare um, where we work with youth already. Malik Naha'ani is shifting the focus on mental health awareness and mental wellness. Mental health has always been something that's been present in the school system. It's been something that our youth and the families have been struggling with, but I think the pandemic has kind of brought it more to the forefront and just brought more awareness, which I think is great. Coleman says there has always been a need. She points out that along with GDOE having existing programs in place, the schools have amazing counselors, social workers, and psychologists as well. What Malik Nahani is just doing is just providing that additional support to say, hey, we're here and we're here to help lighten the load a little bit and address some of these issues so that our kids can focus on what they're really supposed to be doing in school and that's learning and thriving. The $1 million grant is in response to disaster relief. It specifically pertains to natural disasters that are faced in the U.S. and on Guam. And with the coronavirus global pandemic, the grant funding comes at a crucial time. There are just additional stressors and trauma that these kids are exposed to now, um, you know, with the threat of being displaced. Uh, families, you know, facing unemployment, uh, kids having to stay home from school and missing out on that socialization because that's super important in the development of, you know, a child's mental wellness. And with the uncertainty of what lies ahead, WPI has had to adapt. She says that when they did receive the grant money, the intent was to be primarily school-based. We're always going to be working with what the governor puts out for her executive orders and also working in line with Westcare policy. Um, so we've definitely been thinking outside of the box and we've been having meetings with GDOE to see how this is going to look and play out. She says that some of the options is telehealth. It may not be the best, but it's an option for families, obviously with the consent of the parents for the youth and their families to um, engage in some telehealth counseling because we can provide individual counseling and we can also provide family counseling as well as group intervention. West Coast Pacific Islands provides a wide spectrum of health and human services that can help anybody that's in need. We work with the homeless, we work with veterans, uh, we work with youth, we work with those who are experiencing substance use disorder, we work with couples who might need some couples counseling, we work with parents who might need parenting classes. Again, the delivery may look a bit different, but the services have not stopped. If you would like more information on all their programs, you can give them a call at 472-0218, go to their website at westcare.com, or follow Westcare Pacific Islands on any of the social media platforms. We're really just here to help the community in any way we can. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gincharfris. Brought to you by GTA. We start with you.